Okay, who gives you Gordy? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It says, okay, now back again. Okay. <laughs> back again. Okay, now we're ready. Nothing can go wrong from here. Oh. We hope. <laughs> Okay, Namo Om Vishnu Vidaya Krishna Vishtaya Vikalesh Mati Bhakti Vedanta Svanti Namaste Namaste Sarisati Devi Gaulavani Pacharine Neva Seisha Sanyavari Pashtatara Satarine Jai Sri Krishna Jai Danya Prabhunita Ananda Shri Advaita Kadadha Shiva Sari Bhaura Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ulam Hare Ulam Ram Ram Okay, so um, we've made the uh, entrance into chapter 12. And um, anyone can give a quick synopsis of where we are in the verses. What did we... Yesterday, we was reading the verse which speaks about... Fix your mind onto me, do everything. Yeah, that was Krishna's first directive. Yeah. So what now what you said is going to be yeah. like yeah, Krishna is going to tell if you can't do this, then do this, otherwise do this, like that. Yeah, so, you you got right it. So, this is very interesting, especially when it comes to preaching. So you're gonna recognize you will recognize in our community or in any um temple community or any then you're gonna have Devotees will be practicing all these different levels that Krishna is recommending here. Yes. So this this um this verse is um for advanced devotees, this verse eight. Those who are, you could say, spontaneously attached to meditating upon Krishna. So then the next verse is if we're not able to do that, then we should follow the regulative principles of bhakti yoga. And then develop the shakti. Then you'll develop the desire to attain Krishna. So that would be the stage of more spontaneous practice. But but to get there, we have to follow the prince the regulative principles of bhakti yoga, which is called Vaidhi. Yeah. All right, so then it's on today's reading here, 1210. If you cannot do that, then this is the next suggestion. Okay. So someone like to begin today to read the verse. It's here on the screen. Yeah, I will read. Go ahead. Um, Abasya piyasa martosi matkarma paramo baba matartama pikarmani kravansidin mavatsisi. If you cannot practice the regulations of bhakti yoga, then just try to work for me. Because by working for me, you will come to the perfect stage. Prabhupada by Srila Prabhupada. When he was not able even to practice the regulative principles of Bhakti Yoga under the guidance of his spiritual master, can still be drawn to this perfectional stage by working for the Supreme Lord. How, do, how to do this work has already been explained in the 55th verse of the 11th chapter. One should be sympathetic to the propagation of Krishna consciousness. There are many devotees who... Um, are engaged in the propagation of Krishna consciousness. Um, does it say they require help? Yeah. Sorry? They require help. So That's even if, and they require thanks. So even if one cannot directly practice the regulative principles of bhakti yoga, he can try to help such work. Every endeavor requires land, capital, organization, and labor. Just as in business, one requires a place to stay some capital to use, some labor and some organization to expand. So the same is required in the service of Krishna. The only difference is that in materialism, one works for sense gratification. The same work, however, can be performed for the satisfaction of Krishna, and that is spiritual activity. If one has sufficient money, he can help in building an office or temple for propagating Krishna consciousness, or he can help with publications there are various fields of activity and one should be interested in such field activities. If one cannot sacrifice the results of his activities, the same person can still sacrifice some percentage to propagate Krishna consciousness. This voluntary service to the cause of Krishna consciousness will help one to rise 
to a higher state of love of God, for God, whereupon one becomes perfect. Okay, thank you. So, Damini, there's two people waiting. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I've let them in. I was listening to the words. I've let them in. Okay. So, um, any media observations or questions here? Yeah, I mean, over the years, I can see, or perhaps even you, you yourselves, you can picture um, such persons who are connected to the temple, either here or Bhaktivedanta Man or wherever you may be, that they may not be signed up exactly to, or they may not be following, or they may not be sadhakas as such. They, 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 they may not come up to the... Um, platform of um, following ready to principles or they may not be initiated but they're extremely favorable to Krishna consciousness and they have a very friendly relationship and and they do what they can yeah we've had all types connected to our temple many persons coming to do carpentry work the electrical work so many different services they actually do but here it's mentioned, um, yeah, by uh, working for me. So it's so it's mentioned here that they will eventually. That so so that's good. Okay, best is okay. You're strict sadhaka. You're 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 initiated. You're strictly following the principles of shravan and kirtanam. You know, and you're chanting the holy name sixteen rounds a day. But you see, and, and I've been I've been in different temples in. Europe as well, and there's always, and an, an every temple has, they are devotees, but they're not able for one reason or another to perhaps come up to the stage of taking initiation. Some, some are like that for 20, 30, 35 years, but they're very eager to do services to actually help the devotees. So I see that in Ireland, in Inisra, the Sun, and also in temples in Europe where I've been. Radha Desh, they've got their devotees there. Who, and sometimes, sometimes these, these say, quote, I mean, they are devotees. Sometimes they can be a bit problematic, but not all the time. So the reason I'm bringing that out is that we should have, uh, we should have quite a broad perspective of appreciation for anyone who's doing any service and who identifies themselves as a devotee, even though they may not be initiated or even planning to take initiation. <laughs> you see that, but they're very, very friendly. I remember one story. I remember I was in Inisraf. This was a few years ago. And there was a man, there was an Indian man who would live on the boat, which was parked by the side of the island. And he would come over from India and he would live on this abandoned boat. And he would, uh, he would he'd be there for like six or seven months a year. And the reason they allowed him to stay there because he would pay a little rent for like living on this boat. So, you know, I, I mean, I don't know who is who exactly when I first visited there. And I, um, and I saw him sitting on the bench and I sat next to him and started to, to speak to him and ask him questions, you know, developing a relationship with him. And he's very enthusiastic, a very nice person, but an interest in life. Um, but and then I spoke to one of the devotees there and, and I said, oh, I saw you speaking to that man. Well done. You know, I've been here 10 years and, and I've never spoken to him. <laughs> This person being there years and I've never spoken to him because he's a bit of yeah because you know there's a, he, he he wouldn't come forward much to offer any service anyway I'm going off the track a bit here but I'm just saying it's good to have an open you know to appreciate anyone who's connected somehow I think he was doing a I think he was doing as he was, was doing some type of service. But they wasn't satisfied with what he was offering, so there's a bit of animosity between him and the and the devotees in the temple. Anyway, Hare Krishna. 
Uh, any other comments no, or questions? <laughs> Your voice is coming in and out. Try again. Didn't hear, sorry. I guess that's Nimai Mata. Yes. Yes. <laughs> sorry, oh. Mark, we can't hear you properly. So anyway, so here we can engage. Um, we can, there's lots to be done. Prabhupada says requires some capital. Like, and we can do both. I mean, there's devotees are initiated and they're, um, and they're sadhakas and they're serious practitioners and they're doing this as well. And they're giving capital in order to help. Yeah, they're helping with labor and maybe helping with organization. Right, so that's there as well. Prabhupada says can help with publications. Oh, and that reminds me. Um, there's a quote I shared with um, one friend of mine we was discussing the other day of this principle of, you know, we got the um, devotees who are engaged in Sankirtan and, in, and, and on book distribution. Sometimes when you hear the classes or you hear that presentation, sometimes you could feel like a second class citizen because you don't go out on books anyone felt like that sometimes you may not be a young single brahmachari who's able to go on books every day or hurry an arm every day you have different responsibilities so there's this nice let me find it yeah okay this is from um fourth canto Chapter 21, text 26. It's a it's a speech given by Prithu Maharaj. He's given this wonderful speech, and he says, This is the verse. I request all the pure-hearted demigods, forefathers, and saintly persons to support my proposal. For after death, the result of an action is equally shared by its doer, its director and supporter. And Prabhupada, this is just part of the purple. Since the Krishna consciousness movement going on at the present moment is genuine, perfect, and authorized, and is following in the footsteps of Prithu Maharaj, anyone who cooperates with this movement or accepts its principles will get the same result as the workers who are actively propagating Krishna consciousness. Right, so everyone's part of the Sankirtan movement. Some have the privilege of being able to be on the front line, so to speak. There's lots of glory there. But anyone who's supporting, Papa says, any anyone who cooperates, anyone who will get the same result as the workers who are actively propagating Krishna consciousness. Right. But there's some hope. Very Krishna. Any comments on that? Otherwise, let's move on then. That's that's cool. hey, Krishna and uh, Prabhupada practice exactly what the Prabhupada says mm. when he started the moment. Yeah. Sorry, Prabhupada. Prabhupada practice exactly what the Prabhupada is saying. Have he engaged? Different devotees in doing different yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And collect. He asked yeah. them to do to work and use their Lakshmi for the temples. Yeah. And then you see cases of world where, where devotees will be assisting in some way, but they might not be fully committed. But then sometime later, they become fully committed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like we have the case of Rupanuga Bhakti Dal. He used to come and give massage to uh, devotees used to come in the ashram and the brahmacharis they would request a massage because that was his line of work health and massage he used to just come and offer that to the devotees and now look at him he's practically the temple president <laughs> practically you know he's like vice president so <coughs> yeah okay let's read text 11 did someone like to read that? Can I, no, can I do a Please, yes, go ahead. Text 11. 
If, however, you are unable to work in this consciousness of me, then try to act giving up all results of your work and try to be self-situated. Purport. It may be that one is unable even to sympathize with the activities of Krishna consciousness because of social, fam familial or religious considerations or because of some other impediments. If one attaches himself directly to the activities of Krishna consciousness, there may be objections from family members or so many other difficulties. For one who has such a problem, it is advised that he sacrifice the accumulated result of his activities to some good cause. Such procedures are described in the Vedic rules. There are many descriptions of sacrifices and special functions of punya or special work in which the result which the result of one's previous action may be applied. Thus one may gradually become elevated to the state of knowledge. It is also found that when one when one who is not even interested in the activities of Krishna consciousness gives charity to some hospital or some other social institution, he gives up he gives up the hard earned results of his activities. This is also recommended here because by the practice of giving up the fruits of one's activities, one is sure to purify his mind gradually. And in that purified stage of mind, one becomes able to understand Krishna consciousness. Of course, Krishna consciousness is not, is not dependent on any other experience because Krishna consciousness itself can purify one's mind. But if there are impediments to accepting Krishna consciousness, one may try to give up the results of his actions. In that respect, social service, community service, national service, sacrifice for one's country, etc. may be accepted so that someday one may come to the stage of pure devotional service to the Supreme Lord. In Bhagavad Gita 18.46, we find it is stated, Yata Pravite Bhutanam if one decides to sacrifice for the Supreme Cause, even if he does not know that the Supreme Cause is Krishna, he will come gradually to understand that Krishna is the Supreme Cause by the sacrifice, sacrificial me method. Sacrificial. Sacrificial, sacrificial yeah. method. Can you let Nita Mata in again? I have. Okay. I've let her in. One second. Just going to get my bug of the It'd be a big button. <laughs> It says joining, and that's it. Okay, just get my hard copy so I can see the whole purple. This is very interesting purple here. Any immediate comments or questions? Um, I have a question. Hey, yes. Um, I'm just thinking, it says that if you're not Krishna consciousness and you're just giving up some of your hard-earned money for charity or giving to temples. But what if that person is not following any regulative principles, um, who's actually um, drinking, eating, but they're still giving some in charity? What, 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 what is the... Is it that they are still getting purified or their mind is getting purified? What if they're doing it just to make themselves feel good that they're doing something? Well, um, the fact is, is that at least within their life, which may be a mess, mm. uh, may be a mess, at least there's some hope if they're charitable mm -hmm. and they like to give in charity or they give away, as it's mentioned here. Mm -hmm. that, that is a good for them amongst everything that is bad. Ah. Uh, so... Yeah. It may, it will purify them, but it may take longer, maybe right. a longer path to actually lead a clean and sacred life. But that would, that is something which would should be encouraged in such persons, mm -hmm. even if it seems impossible to bring them to a sacred lifestyle. And it's, yeah. I guess, it's quite a unique case you're speaking about, because persons generally, if they're living that type of life. Then they're mm. generally 
not very charitably disposed. I guess they may be. I guess they, yeah, but yeah. but if no, there are people like there's that, somebody in my family who who you know is um, yeah, obviously so you know to be trying to change him, but you know they're totally uh, you know yeah, totally addicted, totally drinkers, totally yeah. you know. But uh, they but they give charity, but you know yeah. the, the the reason why they also give charity is because of tax reasons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so, so i was just thinking how they you know how they would come to the right path eventually well so that's an example where obviously preaching to them to become vegetarians to stop drinking would obviously it just creates animosity it kind of made <laughs> so <laughs> you just want to encourage them oh well done this you're doing because that will be that that's their only hope that's what this purple is saying mm. That's their hope that there's that they have some sense. They have some sense of charity. Yes, even yes. if it's motivated. So that <laughs> yeah, that's comfort. good. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so but then you would best to encourage them in that, and then you can develop some type of a relationship where you're appreciating what they're doing, and you're encouraging them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. So there may be situations here where um, persons, Prabhupada says here, due to social, familial or religious considerations, they're unable to practice Krishna consciousness. And there are such situations. We had one colored man from Africa who joined the temple. This is a few years ago. And he comes from Africa and he happened to come from a super a super fanatical born again, born again everyone else goes to hell family in their village super super kind of evangelical christians from who from their perspective anyone who's not a christian is going to hell and he joined <laughs> harry krishnas <laughs> so <laughs> obviously it caused some friction and um, they actually, because he still had some ties, he still had some responsibilities where he had to go back to Africa. And they they refused. They actually imprisoned him. They took away his Bhagavad Gita. They took away his beads and they burnt it. And they oh. took away his passport. And we've never seen him since. Oh. He's oh. unable. So he, he, he literally... Well, so he fits into this category. Bit of a graphic example. Yeah. So Prabhupada's, yeah, saying here, yeah. Yeah, and also we see that persons who are charitable, generally they they have some quite a strong sattvic nature. Some, yeah. They're charitable, so it's good. It's good, it creates some pious it creates some piety within within them so that will eventually by the association of devotees it could lead them to associate with devotees and to eventually take to krishna consciousness now papa mentions that taking the bhakti is not dependent upon those pious activities i put it papa say um it's not dependent here krishna consciousness is not dependent on the other experience because Krishna consciousness itself can purify one's mind. But if there are impediments to accepting Krishna consciousness, one may try to give up the results of his actions. Mm -hmm. So it's good to keep that in mind because sometimes we preach that you should only give in charity. If you're giving charity, you should give to Krishna, which is true. Charity in different modes. But if you're unable to do that, then at least you should give in charity. Mm -hmm. And also here, this is very interesting as well. Prabhupada even says here, in that respect, social service, okay, that's fair enough, do some social service, community service, okay. Then he says national service and sacrifice for one's country. <laughs> so he says, join the army. <laughs> and that may be accepted 
So someday when one, one may come to the stage of pure devotional service to, to the Supreme Lord. I don't know if you, if you noticed that when we read so national service, that means, as far as I know, it means you join the army. Mm -hmm. yeah. You sacrifice for one's country. Because mm. it's in one sense, it's a selfless act in one sense, not in the complete sense, that you put your life or you put your life, what do you say? You, or you, or you, for a cause. For... Yeah, you, you sacrifice your life for a cause beyond your own personal self and that will put okay then we could argue i would say if they're fighting for you know a government or a country which is you know there it is not very dharmic you're saying everyone who fights for the russians then that's good everyone who fights for the ukrainian or whatever side you're on then yeah. they get to that type of discussion but it doesn't matter if one has that I guess then we could bring in, okay, say if you're fighting for ISIS, you know, <laughs> then it gets complicated. <laughs> you know, yeah, it gets complicated in, in one sense. Let's just take the general, the general direction here. If one's putting oneself, one's yeah. life on the line for, for a higher cause, then that's, then that may, proper says, that someday one may come to the stage of pure devotional service. If one is unable to practice directly the principles of Krishna consciousness. It's a form of austerity, isn't it? It's a form of giving up, sacrificing something. It could be yeah. anything, but sacrificing. Yeah, it's a good point. Yeah, sacrificing something. Something. Sacrificing your comforts, sacrificing yes. your yeah. yeah, I mean if you join the army, you know, you're not gonna get a four star hotel bed <laughs> to stay in when you're on the front line. <laughs> and 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 the austerities that they have to do that yeah. to accept is pretty um, pretty drastic. But mm. they become oh. and I met persons who are in the army. I I know friends or persons you may meet who are in the army and they you can tell there are not not in all cases obviously but in a lot of cases they're more of a they're more of a rounded person they're quite you know they what's the word and you can tell they've been purified tolerant more tolerant yeah yeah maybe Okay, we're speaking generally. There may be exceptions. Some people come out and they become mental health problems. Yeah, they become mental health problems. Yeah. Anyway, any questions about this? I'm rambling on a bit here. Yeah, <laughs> hey, Prabhu, I, I have a question. Same yeah. corollary, corollary of what Moni Mataji just asked. So her question was, um, you know, that between the two. So if I flip the question around and say somebody has come to the temple, uh, staying in the ashram, giving up, following the regulator, but is hypocritical, telling lies, doing other things, you know, vindictive or whatever, creating havoc. Yeah. Is it and then there's somebody else on the other spectrum who's truthful, uh, somebody like, you know, President uh, who's Abdul Kalam, who just left. He was you know, he always thought about philanthropic work, talked about the Gita, but did his job with complete sincerity for the benefit of multiple people. Who would you gauge between the two? Here's somebody who's not wearing Kanti Mala, uh, but there are people wearing Kanti Mala in the temple being hypocritical, causing offenses left, right and center. Yeah, you really, it's difficult to actually, if I can use the word, past judgment and we should be careful before we might do it. who is to know what is going on so a person joins a temple but they come in with a lot of baggage they yeah. come in with a lot of issues they're coming from a perhaps a background of abuse yeah. and so they come when they join the temple so they may be going through and, and they may be very sincere about Krishna consciousness, but they're very weak in their personal character. And, and they may exhibit symptoms, as you said. You know? 
but they may be, if they're sincere, if they are sincere, then we sh then we should understand that they're becoming that the process of Krishna consciousness will purify them. Or otherwise, if they're not, or if they don't really take to the process of Krishna consciousness, and they continue causing disturbance and they're making offenses to the Vaishnavas, then obviously, as we see, then they won't be able to stay in association with devotees. But the point I'm making here, my Guru Maharaj mentions this in the Sudabhakti Chin, Chintamani, that devotees who join from the West are, are often coming with a lot of baggage. But then you've got someone who's in a mode of goodness, say, in India, like they're Indian, but they're sattvic. But the persons who's coming from the West, they may be coming with a few issues, but they you sometimes it's seen that they're very sincere about their chanting and very sincere about being Krishna conscious. And so they may be susceptible to the modes of passion and ignorance. But the person who's sattvic may never actually become a sadhaka, may never actually take up the principles of bhakti in full earnestly. You understand? They may not. They must be happy with their sattvic situation. They're just sattvic, but they're not engaged in the process of anatta, you know, of a, of a bhakti. So which one, so in that sense, so which one is better situated? You know, in that sense, the person's come with a lot of baggage and a lot of issues. If they're working through it and they're coming to terms of it, and they're working through it, and I have known devotees who I see when I go to different places, Mayapur, things like that. I see devotees who are, who were was in their temple, but due to such behavior, they wasn't able to actually stay there. So they kind of float around, but there's still there's a couple of devotees I've seen my part i think somebody might know that when i go and this they're sincere about the practice of krishna consciousness but it's better for them not to live in a close proximity with other devotees because they just make offenses so they live a little bit independent you know they become independent and they don't live under you know that that you know they're not able to live under the thumb of the temple president or the temple commander that brings out too many nartas in there but they're still connected to krishna consciousness and they're kind of a bit independent of what they do and where they go anyway i don't know if that answered your question Mother Sadami. i don't know if it answered but it gave me some insight uh, perspective of the same thing of the same situation yeah, I think that's what we're generally not trying to find an answer, but give a different perspective on it. Yeah, as mentioned, Sudha Bhakti Chintamani, my guru speaks about that, the difference between a pious person and a person who joins, but they're sincere, but they come with a bit of baggage. But we should understand that the process will purify such a person. It may take a bit of time. <laughs> but there can be dramatic changes. People can go through dramatic transformations. And some people seem to go for no transformation. <laughs> I think the ones that come with the baggage, the Western ones, at least they don't have any, their own thoughts in spiritual life. So they take it up. And as they, yeah. the office, they will take it. Mm -hmm. the ones who come with the sattvic, they already think that I know this, I know this, I know that. So yeah. that don't make that advancement, you know. They don't surrender to the process because I know it. Mm. Whereas the other, like we we're in this life, we we want to clear our slate. So we came with baggages. So we have so much on our slate that we need to keep ticking off, clearing up, clearing up. It's like that, you know. Yeah, and that's why Prabhupada was <laughs> um, very appreciative. And that's why Krishna consciousness spread in the West before it spread in India. Because devotees were open. They, you know, they wasn't coming with so many, as you said, so many other ideas about Krishna, etc., what he is or what he is not. 
the Prabhupada said, so much hodgepodge. <laughs> they just accepted it as it is. Whatever Prabhupada said, then they accepted. When they saw when they saw the quite wondrous and unique form of Jagannath, you know, the, the hippies said, Who is this? Prabhupada said, This is God. Oh, okay. <laughs> no problems. All right, this is God, far out. So that's also another perspective on that. Yeah. Another perspective is that Indian people, for example, they are humble, but they have too many gods. And when things go <laughs> to worship, one, they don't know which one to which one, you know. But yeah, yeah. but they, they accept with them is one approach. But with Western people, they have too many attachments. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, sattvic, not sattvic, but they have too many attachments. And that for them is very difficult to. Uh, accept that we have to give up those attachments is the hardest task. Yeah. All right. So that's a good different perspectives on that. But it's an interesting purple. I always find this purple interesting, especially this part. National service and sacrifice of one's country is recommended. Mm -hmm. Then a life without sacrifice. Yeah. Okay. So these now, are the purports. Sorry. sorry? <laughs> These are the purports that Prabhupada wrote in the beginning. So like national service and all that, you know. Later on he would say, like, you don't need to do these things. Is well, well, Prabhupada, yeah, he would say that, but still, this is in Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita. This is a purple yes. which is available. So Prabhupada's kind of broadening it out. Is broadening it out of here. Oh, it's Krishna. It's Krishna's. Papa's just explaining um, Krishna's direction. So this is still relevant, I think. It's still very relevant. But I'm but just to say this is not the type of preaching which you may do to persons who are coming to devotional service. You may, you know, these are persons who, what's the verse say? It says those are unable. Yeah, they're unable because of various reasons to come to bhakti. So then you want to encourage them. Okay, so at least you want to encourage charitable works within them, you know? Is yeah. that yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking the same. That Prabhupada is doing this, but later on he said, Okay, then if you can't do this, do this, do this. So later on yeah. he can be like just to devotional service. That's it. That yes, so Later on, Krishna just cuts to the chase, so to speak. He says, Shava Dhamam Priyachacha, Mam Ekam Samarambaja, and from Sadhya, Moksha Shri Mas, just surrender. Yes, yeah. yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. That presently, they're saying, okay, you can do this, join the army, join, well, do whatever needs to be done if you can. Yeah. But as one advances, they say, okay, just perform devotional service. Everybody. Yeah, like, um, yeah, this is not for us. This is not for devotees in general. It's not as if, oh, great, great, I'm going to go and join the army now. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're already in Lord Chaitanya's army and you're getting yeah. more purified. So no need to. for us to um, go in this direction. Okay, so next then, if one is, one is un unable to do this, so next, number 12. You can't even give in charity. So what do you do? Okay, someone like to read 12? 12, 12. Madhumanda Prabhu, you've got your hand up? Hare Krishna, yeah. If I, I can. Sorry. Hare Krishna, Mad yeah. Um, I can't see anyone's hand up, so you have to unmute and ask. Or... Thank you, thank you. Madhumanda, yes, please. Yeah, I'm ready. Shreya oh, Okay, go on. Yeah. Shreya hi jananam abhi yasaj janana dhyanam vishyate dhyanat karma pala dhyayagas yagak chantir anantaram. Okay. But translation If you cannot take to this practice, then engage yourself in the cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, However, is med meditation, 
And better than meditation is renunciation of the fruits of action. For by such renunciation, one can attain peace of mind. Purport. As mentioned in the previous verses, there are two kinds of devotional service, the way of regulative principles and the way of full attachment in the love to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For those who are actually not able to follow the principles of Krishna consciousness, it is better to cultivate knowledge, because by knowledge, one can be able to understand his real position. Gradually, knowledge will develop to the point of med meditation. By meditation, one can be able to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead by a gradual process. In the, in the, in this, in the cultivation knowledge, there are processes of making one understand that one, I can't really see next, one second, because it's uh, my camera there. Oh, sorry, now it's moving. Cultivation of knowledge, there are processes which make one understand that one himself is the supreme and that sort of meditation is preferred if one is I'm waiting for the page Morley probably if you can change I've, it I've, I, I've changed it at my end it's probably a bit slow okay, coming, yeah. okay let's see enable to engage in devotional service if one is not able i can't see what is for some reason my camera doesn't move away from the writing we all oh. have that we all have that ah if one is not able to meditate in such a way then there are prescribed duties as enjoyed in the vedic literature for the brahmanas kshatriyas vaishas and shudras which we shall find in the last chapter of bhagavad gita but in all the, in all cases one should give up the results of fruitive fruits of labor this means to employ the result of karma for some good cause. In summary, to reach the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the, higher, the highest goal, there are two processes. One process is by gradual development, and the other process is direct. Devotional service in Krishna consciousness is the direct method, and the other method involves renun renun renouncing the fruits of one's activities. Then one can come to a stage of knowledge, then to the stage of meditation, then to the stage of understanding the supreme, the super soul, and then to the stage of the supreme personality of Godhead. One may take either the step-by-step -step process or the direct path. The direct process is not possible for everyone. Therefore, the indirect process is also good. It is, however, to be understood that the indirect process is not recommended for Arjuna because he is already at the stage of loving devotional service to the Supreme Lord. It is for others who are not at this stage. For them, the gradual process of renun renunciation, knowledge, meditation, and realization of the Super Soul and Brahman should be followed. But, but as far as Bhagavad Gita is concerned, it is the direct method that is stressed. Everyone is advised to take to the direct method and surrender into the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so, Mabhachandvali, this, this addresses that last point you made. Mm -hmm. Prabhupada is addressing that in this purple here. Like, Arjuna is obviously, this is being spoken to Arjuna, but he it should be understood that it, he he is engaged and he's been advised to direct, engage directly in the process of Krishna consciousness. So that, and then Prabhupada at the end he seems to he says everyone is advised. So that's Prabhupada. Although he's mentioned there is a therefore an indirect process is recommended for some. Prabhupada is encouraging in his preaching mood. Actually, everyone should take to the direct method. <laughs> But that's after he said it may not be possible. So he's encouraging everyone to surrender directly to Krishna. And that is his preaching. Also, this should be also taken into account as well. Some, some it may be an indirect path, slow path. But is there any other questions or comments here? There is one specific sentence which is often questioned by devotees that's made in this purple which is different than what you may 
let's see if anyone can identify that. There's something that Prabhupada says, which is like against everything he seems to be saying everywhere else. Exactly. What I find interesting it is that we read a verse and then you question yourself. And after you question yourself, you realize the answer comes in the next verse. <laughs> yeah. And it goes from next verse to next verse, and that's it's like yeah. taking taking you on a ladder. And this more yeah. realization, it, it's like cutting deeper and then more deeper. And then it's like, mm, oh yeah, it makes you just realize it by reading it. Yeah, that's that that's the wonder of um doing group study and like we're reading it together. And when you do study and that things come up in your mind exactly as that, and then or it may come up like a few days later, then you're reading and you get an answer to what you was contemplating. Yeah. Very good for that. So there's something here which kind of at least for me it stands out like wow, Prabhupada's actually said that statement. Anyone can find it? Otherwise, I shall, I shall highlight it in three seconds. Two kinds of devotees, devotion service. No. Kinds of devotion service. I was thinking, Prabhu, attend the peace of mind. No. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to highlight it. It's here if I can. <laughs> In the cultivation of knowledge, there are processes which makes one understand that one himself is the supreme. Yeah, I find that strange a bit. That <laughs> they think, yeah, many people say they think they are God, but you know, just a drop from the ocean, not the ocean. Yeah, and that type of meditation is preferred if one is unable to engage in devotional service. So, Prabhupada is saying here, yeah. if someone meditates, that he is the supreme. Now that kind of goes against everything we have always understand. So how would, if you're giving class on this and someone asked you this, how would you explain it? But Prabhupada is this here. We say by Paramatma within, in one sense, although we 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 um, worship Krishna as a supreme personality of God in Bhagavan in the Archa Vigraha. But he also resides in every, as Paramatma in every human, every being. So in that sense, we worship that Paramatma in every being as well. So in that sense, the process where one makes one understand oneself is a supreme, is that there is Paramatma in everyone. There is Krishna in everyone. So from a Paramatma point of view, this is still okay, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I could, no. yeah, I mean, agree with you in some sense, but um, this to say, well, one, as you know, to make one understand that one himself is the Supreme. That's quite a no, statement. Yeah, that, that is quite, I understand. You, yeah, that, yeah. Krishna lives within. That's different from feeling of yeah. me. That two different. Maybe. Completely different. That becomes like the other one, you know, what uh, completely what um, Prabhupada is against, impersonal. Yeah, my God, impersonal, where you think you're impersonal. the Supreme. It's like you're God, I'm God, everybody's God, that concept, isn't yeah. it? And that's why it's that's why I bring it out as an interesting statement here in his purple. And and Maybe. Anybody else, if you was asked this question, how would Maybe you maybe in one life, in one life you can think you are God. And then slowly, slowly, you develop more love for God. You don't know anything, but you start worshipping yourself like many other, I don't want to give names on this planet. They are worshipping, let's say, music bands or so on. So they think, oh, I am a, such a big celebrity and I'm worshipping myself. But then slowly, slowly, you have a chance and you meet devotees. And next life, you gather more knowledge. And you manage to purify yourself like that slowly, slowly. Yeah, I mean, okay, let's, okay, let's, um, okay, I think, let's. What is your thoughts that. on that? What's your thoughts? If somebody asked this to you on, on, a, on a class, well, how would you answer that? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm asking because I'm also curious to know the answer, but I've come across this before. And as far as I, as far as I can understand, 
is that we have the Kami, the Gani, and the Yogi. So here, some this is a Gani. So they're cultivating knowledge. Yeah. So at least these persons, from from an objective point of view, they're not gross materialists. Hmm. They're on the path of spiritual emancipation. Yeah. Which includes a strict sadhana. Yeah. So these persons, you know, they will be practicing strict sadhana and a specific meditation. And 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 your point was right, Novice Dharma. It was so like indirectly, they are thinking of the Supreme. The mistake is thinking they themselves are the Supreme, but still it seems that may be preferred that that sort of meditation is preferred rather than just being a gross materialist yeah because yeah. there is some sacrifice there is some austerity there is some discipline and there's something about not being on the gross level yeah so that's how i can what i conclude now it's different if they start blaspheming krishna his pastimes etc then that's on the border of my body mm. and that's different then they're going to hell mm. you know? but this person is more of an innocent pramavadi meditation it could be so that's a better better situation to be mm. than just a gross materialist they calm me or no, even less than that you know calm is a pious mm. That's as much as that's as what I came up with in trying to understand. Isn't there a flip side to this where they become they think that then they they merge in the Brahma Jyoti, they get liberated. So when they get liberated in Brahma Jyoti, they remain there, they cannot enjoy uh, the personal association of the Lord, and they just remain there like that. Yeah, and then they come back down again after some. They come back down so it may be also that Bahanam Janamanam Ante, that after many person deaths, such persons who are engaged in this type of meditation, then they may, by the grace of devotee, accept Krishna actually, Vasudeva Saman Iti, Samhatma Sadulava. Anyway, I thought this was an interesting statement, mm -hmm. which often is missed when you read it. Yes. And also another thing that yeah. I observed, although, you know, Prabhupada talks about these stages, but even we as devotees, when we are in the very beginning of our Krishna consciousness, we are entering the temple, maybe there is some surrender, but again, not complete, because then we also follow this process where we get the knowledge, the more we read, the more we are in association, then we are able mm -hmm. to understand his real position. Then again, gradually we developed, even chanting at the beginning is more of a struggle, you know, yeah. as years go by, it's still struggle, but it gets better. So, I mean, we are practicing all of this, um, although we are, you know, so we are taking this process anyway, is what I was thinking. And then a point comes yeah. and it... <laughs> yeah, so, that's it. Yeah. Which Prabhupada brings out in the purple here, he speaks about Nishkam Karma Yoga. So as to, yeah, you're, you're, it's right. You've always made join the community, join the temple or whatever, but they still may be very much attached to the results of their work. Yeah. But then gradually by hearing and association with devotees, they learn to become detached, like here. Yeah. Yeah, here. Um, they become, they should give up the results of the fruits of their labor. So that's, that's this come karma. Yeah. So yeah, so you're right. So just by being in the community, Internally, one may be going through these different stages, yeah, of yeah. attachment to unattachment, then attached to the fruits, and then gradually becoming more surrendered completely to to Krishna. Yeah, because even even in even when we are practicing, there is some attachment. There's always some doing and wanting something in return. It's it's like yeah. Mm -hmm. But he called, it, he called it our devotion is often Mishra. It has some mixture. But then that's why it's good for us to study what is actually pure devotion. Mm. And if you, if you do study Prabhupada's books and you read his purports, then Prabhupada basically is teaching 
the mindset of a pure devotee. So, so we can start, so then we can direct ourselves to, at least we can try to but direct. I to think the, more than the mindset, that is theory, that when you see somebody practice, like, you know, when you have the association that an saintly person and through his behavior, through his natural, uh, you know, that is more inspiring. When you see that, you think, yeah, you see his level, see how where he is. That's how you want to be. Because reading, yeah. of course, it's more on a mental platform. This is that, this is that. Like, But experiencing it is, is something else. That inspires you and motivates you. Yeah, that's a very good point. And that's, the, uh, so that's why association devotees is so much recommended. Like if you read about humility yeah. and you meet someone who actually embodies that, yeah. That it kind of enters your heart and you aspire for such a thing. But just by reading yeah. it, it may not have the same effect. Yeah. It may do, but generally you're going to take a bit more purity to actually have to say, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Mm, Prabhu, I just uh, can Please. I also say something. Uh, I was thinking for um, uh, Sir Dominic's uh, comment. Uh, that is why Mahaprabhu said, uh, Prachar, more than Prachar, Char is a char is important. So yeah, you yeah. see a person. And also I wanted to say what I was thinking. Srila Popat, the line you highlighted before that, Srila Popat clearly says a meditation is a gradual process. So I think in that line you highlighted, he's just yeah. clarifying. That's what I understood. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. By meditation, one can one it's can a gradual a process. He says that. By a gradual process. Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. That's, yeah, we, so in this cultivation of knowledge, so that's the first step. That may be a first step yeah. for some. Yeah. So that is preferred in this gradual process. Yeah. So back to the verse again. Like, if you cannot take to this practice, so mm -hmm. what's that practice? That practice was just to remind ourselves again. Giving charity, give up the results of your work. If you're not able to do that. Then engage yourself in cultivation of knowledge. Better than knowledge, actually, is meditation. And better than meditation is the renunciation of the fruits of action. But with such renunciation, one can attain peace of mind. Um, and I don't have access to it, but I know there's an interesting commentary on this given in um, Surrender Unto Me. Perhaps I'll find that for next week. Okay, so the time is kind of disappeared in an instant <laughs> again so it's seven o'clock um perhaps we'll pause there and then we'll pick it up from next tuesday yeah i think we're good so yeah, interesting I, discussion yeah. any look at the chat thank you for yes, the chat has said bhagavad gita it's luda bhagavad gita 9.15 she's typed it in there do you want to come say what it is about I don't, um, I can't see any chat. I can't see. You have to read it. 9.1. Yes, 9.15 actually. It's about um, the gradual process of meditation when you talk about. It's inappropriate. Srila Prabhupada write this, that uh, they start this meditation by thinking they are the Lord. Oh, I said, which is that? You said, said 9, Bhagavatam? 9.15. 9.15. Oh, Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, Bhagavad Gita? Yeah. All right, okay, let, let, let's just quickly, we're going over time now. Um, yeah, exactly what I was thinking, Ludia, because I, when I took off this um, read Bhagavad Gita, I was thinking, why is Krishna saying, surrender to me, surrender to me, when he's telling you to be humble? But then uh, from all this um, talking, this person would come in, okay, I'm supreme, I'm supreme. But as they practice devotional service, ah, I'm not the supreme. Somebody else is the supreme. Mm -hmm. That realization, <laughs> like me, after a long time. But, you know, I was thinking, okay, we're going to go to the nine. Fifteen. Ah, most confidential knowledge, obviously. Nine, fifteen. Gone past it. Well, 15. I was so engaged in sacrifice. Did you mean the verse or the purple? 
in the purple. Okay. Perhaps we won't have time to read the whole thing, but it's fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, look, we're right here. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Um, some of them have already been described as distressed or financially destitute, inquisitive, and those who engage in cultivation of knowledge. But there are others who are still lower. And these are divided into three. One who worships himself as one with the Supreme. Nice. He, he who concocts some form of the Supreme. And he who the universal form, the Vishwarupa, and worships that. Of the above three, the lowest are those who worship themselves as the Supreme. <laughs> so that's exactly what Prabhupada was just saying, thinking themselves to be monists are yeah. most prominent. You see, Prabhupada says anything positive about them. Such people think themselves to be the Supreme, and in this mentality, they worship themselves. Oh, here it is. That, that is also a type of God worship. Yeah. But there is exactly what you said, Mother Sadhana, about the super soul. That is yeah. also a type of God worship. Yeah. But they can understand that they are not the material body. This is what I'm saying. They can understand they're not material body, but actual spirit soul. At least this is prominent. sense is prominent. At least they're not from the bodily path from their own. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's soul level. Right, that's wonderful. Uh, thank you, Mabaluda, for finding that. Complete our question very nicely. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, let's pause there. Let's not stop. Let's just pause and we'll continue um, next Tuesday with this Tuesday. chapter 12. Yeah. Okay. Shiva Prabhupada Ki Jai. Uh, I'm going to keep the key tight. Yes. Yeah. No. Hi, Bob. Thank you, Prabhu, so much. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. I'm trying to find out how to turn the zoom off. Hare Krishna. <laughs> I'll be here all night. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you, everyone. Hare Please Krishna. join us for the next session. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Ram Ram. Ram Ram. Ram Hare. Hare. He's in the Italian. Vihera in the topics. Okay. Haribo. Haribo. <laughs>